Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Supercoach Challenges and tonight we're having a look at, um, well, the results from the match um, that just passed between Melbourne and Brisbane, which I think was a, a little bit of a surprising result for all of us out there because I didn't really see the Demons losing this one. Um, and, you know, they kind of dominated for most of the game, to be honest, which is a little bit surprising as well. Um, so... Uh, to start off, well, looking at Max Gorn, so a very popular VC and captain choice. Uh, I had a look, it was 36% combined VC captain. I think like 31% of that was VC. And I think most of those would be happy with the 138. It's not like a 150, 160 that we've seen in previous weeks from other players, but a 138 is still very good, and it's good to lot that away early. Um, on the Melbourne side, really, not much else to talk about. There wasn't. There's was only one other score over 100, and that was Rivers. And then the rest of the players are are pretty irrelevant to our um our super coach teams. I mean, if you had Billings, I guess 70s an all right score. Um, but I doubt anyone had him. Most would have traded him last week. Clayton Oliver continues to be disappointing. Um, he just doesn't look the same. Looks like he could have used a few games in the VFL before being put straight back into the AFL to get some match fitness, but um, hopefully he can get back to a bit of good form in the back end and maybe we can look at him then. Um, Howes actually did very well for those who kept him by hitting that break even, although he didn't go massively over. At least this is a, you know, if this is going to be your fifth score, it's not the worst. A 62 is decent from a rookie. But I think it's one of those ones where if you traded him, you're all right. And if you didn't, you're, you're happy as well. Um, I guess he's got the buy next week, so you're probably training him anyway. But if you kept him, you probably get one or $2,000 more because um, he didn't beat his break even by much. Um, and for those who traded him out, well, you got him out earlier. Um, probably the interesting one here is Christian Pratarka. So uh, a 59, um, which is going to see his... Price plummet. I think he's priced at 650 right now, and I think he had a relatively high break even. And this is now going to see him go back to what uh, probably under 500, uh, sorry, 600k, which is good for um, people who want to look at getting him. I'm not sure about Petrarca because I feel like, I mean, like last year, obviously he was really, really good. Um, but I think that was like with Oliver not playing a lot of the time. Petrarca has shown these um, floor games quite a bit. Um, probably more than most other like ultra primos you look at. Um, but still, you know, he's the type of guy who can also go 160, 170 pretty easily as well. So, um, yeah, one you probably wait and see, see if you can get some form back. Um, but for now, we can wait as the price goes down. Um, otherwise, um, the debutante Tholstrup, um, he came on early with Salem doing his hammy. Um, actually, it wasn't him that was sub, was it? It was uh, Woe Woden, sorry. But he was, so he started um, and scored a 34, so not particularly awesome. But I guess we can see next week if he scores all right and see if he's worth a pickup from there. Um, and uh, otherwise, from a super coach um, point of view, it's not great from a Melbourne perspective other than Gorn. Um, yeah. The other boys didn't really fire today. Um, and for Brisbane, um, Cam Rayner was massive, especially in that first quarter. So he had nine clearances. Um, and six of those were in the first quarter. And actually going back to Gorn, Gorn had 23 of his 51 hitouts in the first quarter. I thought he was going to go for like 60 or 70 the way he was going. It was ridiculous. He was smashing everything. Obviously tied out a bit, but um, yeah, at I tweeted out, I thought, well, what is the record? Because Gorney could go close to it. But I think 51, um, probably a little bit disappointing in the end, considering you got 23 or 4 in the first and then 27 for the rest. Um, 138, I thought this could maybe be worth a bit more. He probably kicked the goal a little bit late when it didn't really matter. Um, and one free kick against, but um, and looks like he's... Um, the 52% probably didn't help either for his disposal efficiency. Um, yeah, going to Brisbane. So Rayner was really, really good. Um, I'd be interested to see CBAs because he, um, yeah, obviously six clearances, um, but he hasn't really scored well for the rest of the year. He's he's 390K as a forward player. Um, and if he gets more midfield time, which you think, you know, Brisbane had a good result tonight, they might actually look at continuing to do that. Um 
yeah, he could be a very interesting pickup um, if he if he can continue to show the form and maybe be breaking out like many have called for many years and not seen it until really being given a glimpse of it now. He didn't even kick a goal, so it's it's very um a very nice score for him. Um, he and looking at the DT to super coach is actually uh, a, a huge gap there, which is very very interesting. Um, Dunkley. Um, coming back a little bit to form, I guess, 122 is nice. Zorko is another interesting one in our forward line. Probably going to get defender, for, defender forward status, you would uh, assume, um, which is good um, because uh, that's, that's got a little bit of swing, but also he could be a very nice scoring. The only problem with Zorko is he's very injury prone. You feel like you could get to like round 15, 16, and maybe he gets an injury. Maybe the, uh, the two buys will have helped him out, but I think... Brisbane's was quite early, so probably not as good for him. Um, but yeah, anyway, interesting one to watch and maybe think about because he's probably pretty potty at this point as well. Um, Neil looked like he was going to go for a lot bigger score. It looks and he was like on like fifty eight, and his like look at the kick to handball ratio. It was like one kick ten handballs at that point, and I was like, Jesus, his his um his second and third efforts must be good. His pressure efforts um, must be good to be getting such a big score. And I guess maybe that was reflected at the end as that slowed down. So did his scoring. Um, it kind of looks like Dunkley might be taking over a bit more of the, the, uh, the, the possession role in that midfield. But at the same time, Neil did look very good when he did have the ball. Um, Jared Berry, 106 is interesting. It would have been more interesting last year when he was actually a I think it was last year or the year before where he's a 250k mid option. Um, but alas, didn't happen. But um, interesting to see if he steps up more. Um, I think the real interesting one for Supercoach here was Kyle Lohman. So if you got him, you'd be very happy with the 81. Um, I think in my video, I was kind of saying how um, Lohman looked to be playing that role, which was a bit more, uh, a bit like the K Chandler where he pushed up the ground. Um, and he might not get many disposals, but he um, does a lot of the pressuring around the ground, gets lots of tackles. Like he got two, uh, one of these frees four was for from the bounce. He pushed up to the wing and um, got a holding the ball on the debutante for Melbourne. Um, and I think one of the things we do overlook when it comes to a guy who doesn't have job security is they generally do have a lot more hunger to get the ball and, you know, actually prove themselves because they know that if they play a bad game, they might not um, might not be playing next week. And that kind of seems like how Lohman's playing, really. And it's it's interesting as well because uh, Brisbane didn't use the sub, which means that they're quite happy with how the team is looking. And I think if you've got Lohman now, you might have a, a couple weeks of uh, job security with him, which could see him get to, you know, 250, 300K because um, he, did, he did play well. Um, yeah, he didn't get the disposals, but we, we did flag the fact that he didn't he he wasn't an accumulator um, necessarily. He pushed up the ground, um, and if he can get a goal or two, it, like it's this is literally shades of Cade Chandler from last year, who funnily enough did score very similar to him um, in this game as well. Um, exactly the same thing. Like he might only get 10, 12 disposals, but he get tackles and he he chips him for a goal. And that just pushes him to the 80, which a lot of forward players don't do. Now, I know he has 100% efficiency, which probably helped. Um, and the TOG is only 75%, but you're still very happy with that if you brought Loman in for 140K because, it's you know, 80 is a, a good board score, especially with the rookies we have. So, um, and yeah, these were kind of the things we flagged in, in the video about him. So if you didn't watch that... Um, I mean, it might be a bit late now, but if you, if you were interested in what we talked about, because I, I do want to do more of those breakdowns on these players going forward. Um, and I think, yeah, the things we flagged uh, it was his price was a bit elevated. Um, job security wasn't the greatest, although Brisbane didn't really seem to have any other players um, of his kind of position um, that weren't already in the team or playing different positions. Um, I guess, you know, that still remains to be seen as well because um, McKenna's not in the team. Um but when we also flagged the fact that um, he had he had a hard run, like you know Melbourne were one of the hardest forward lines to score against, and he still and he went an eighty one. So if he continue good form, you know good good price uh, movements to see. Um, but outside of that, nothing else great. I mean Bailey went one hundred and two dream team at sixty eight super coach. So 
and there's a lot of marks in there and stuff. So I, I, I do wonder. He doesn't even have many free kicks against. So what's really hurt him? Sick clangers. I mean, Zorko had sick clangers. He had 75% compared to Bailey's 69%. Under. It's interesting to see that Zorko goes 116. Um, he's got, what, a couple more tackles. He's got four less marts. Uh, Hamble's the same. He's got, what, six more kicks, which is the difference. Apparently, that's, you know, 40 or 50. I guess percentage-wise, it does make a difference. Um, so that is probably something to keep. But Bailey did kick a goal, so maybe it was late, but seems surprising. Otherwood, I mean, otherwise, sorry, um, Hipwood was interesting at the start because he was on fire, but obviously dropped off and didn't really do anything for the rest. Um, and yeah, if you had Salem, or had Salem, which I think would have been pretty rare, he did a hammy in the first quarter, so not great for those uh, players. Um, so I thought we'd look at the teams as well. So obviously this is the Melbourne game, which has already gone past, just to have a look to see what's happened. Um, Caleb Daniels been omitted, which is interesting um, because O'Donnell's come in, which means that Buku has quite good job security um, because you'd think O'Donnell would go out before Daniel would, uh, sorry, not Daniel, before Karmas does. So um, any Gallagher's held his spot as well. So um, yeah, kind of an interesting one there. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's McRae or O'Donnell are going to be that sub, but Bramble has survived after a bad game last week as well. So hopefully for those, he, he will bounce back. Um, Alan Davy Jr. Now I think he's a, a rookie. Uh, yeah, he's an elevated price rookie cause he played a bit last year. So, I mean, that could be an option if he goes well. Um, but he is in for Perkins and Setterfield's injured again. Um, <clears throat> So it'll be interesting to see if he holds once uh, Setterfield's back. I don't remember what Setterfield did, but I remember that Perkins was, I think, a hammy. So he'll be out for a while yet. And um, our man, Nick Martin, is in the back line still, which is good to see. Um, hopefully didn't miss anything there. Um, St. Kilda, GWS. So GWS, pretty much the same. Not really much to talk there. Um, St. Kilda, Windhager back in. Garcia, so he's a rookie, I'm pretty sure. Looks like they're just switching through these rookies. Yeah, 117k. Has he played yet? Was he? Oh, so he hasn't. So this is a debutant then. I didn't realize that. Um, but they've dropped Hasty, who had a one for Garcia. So hopefully Garcia doesn't get the sub. But by the looks of that bench, he's definitely going to be sub, unless Darcy Wilson gets it, which wouldn't be great because like uh, for me, I'm starting him on field. Um, just because. Uh, I didn't go for that forward line rookie, which Loman looks like could have been actually good. But um, uh, that looks like Garcia would be the sub there. Um, Zach Jones admitted. So he was 250, 260K. So if you're looking at him as a kind of potty rookie, um, I'm pretty sure it was 250. Uh, Zach Jones. Yeah, 250K. So if you're looking at him, although he wasn't scoring well anyway, but it looks only got 2,000. Um, looks like you can forget about that. And Windhager, if anyone held him, is back in. Um, the Crows. So I think that Hamill could be interesting, but I think he's probably 350-ish just off the top of my head. No, he's 144. So that's actually a... I didn't realize Hamill... Yeah, I guess Hamill hasn't played for really frequently since two years ago. So Hamill could be a very interesting defender because he is a rebounding defender who previously has scored quite well, like 70s, 80s. Um, that's a nice defender to have in. And now that kind of makes me want to rethink what I'm doing with Brown. Um, the only thing is, is Hamill could get just dropped if he plays badly. But it feels like you know, this is the type of player they want to try and keep in. Um, I do wonder if he'll get... Ah, uh, he wouldn't get kickouts, but he will get rebound halfback playing because Michelini plays that lockdown role a bit more. Um, and that's the kind of Malira role. So Hamill could be very, very interesting. Um, be I'm gonna well, I'm gonna watch this game anyway, because I'm a crow supporter, but um, yeah, be interesting to see uh how he plays out and where he is. Uh, do I wanna go Tom Brown now? Do I just go closey? That has not helped um with those issues, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's an interesting one. Maybe I could go Hall later on, but it's not as much money. Yes, very interesting. Um, otherwise, Crow's pretty unchanged. I mean, Galant's in, who's a forward line player as well. 
Um, looking at this, who could be the sub? Barry Cook could be. I don't think it'd be Gallant because or Gallant because. But he's a two seventy six k forward, and I think he scored seventies or sixties last year in his few games. Um, let's have a look. Sorry, zooming in. 60s. So, um, I mean, that was probably in a Rose forward line that scored a little bit better. Did he play 22? I think he did. Uh, 42. No, I don't think he played 21. Oh, yeah, I got one game. Um, but, yeah, so he's shown he could score 60. He's not really good enough at the price. But, um, anyway, you can keep an eye on him. But we have other forward line options that we'd probably find a better um gold coast so the one we want to watch here um they haven't made any changes which is good um for those who are going on obviously closey and graham um ethan reed as well who's a 140k ruck um yeah that's that's actually interesting as well because he's going to keep a spot he could be interesting to get over 170k ruck sorry um interesting to get over livingston but if he's not getting ruck time you probably don't want to go him either um and Hawthorne stay on change as well though Reeves is a mercy don't love that um with the meek but I'm gonna back I'm gonna back Mickey and I reckon I'm gonna back Mickey and I think he's that player he doesn't have the job security so he's gonna be playing hard and hopefully as we discuss he can push wits around the field and maybe outrun him and get some disposals and stuff and maybe even push forward and kick some goals um would be nice to see but yeah this is relatively unchanged a lot of teams are kind of unchanged like port adelaide's uh so cow pepper can listen so that's not really changing anything in their team because they both play similar positions and both out winds in so one's being put straight back in the middle but i assume drew's probably going to get more of the cbas and why might be pushed out to a wing um Jordi Artis is probably the one we're watching here. 230k forward, scored 90 last week, which is good. He's in a good team that are going to score well. Um, so he could be one that you go against Common in, in case Common goes badly. And if Common gets injured, it could be someone we look at as well as Jordi Artis. Um, Erasmus um, is in. Frederick injured. Is Erasmus on field? No, he's on the bench. I'd assume Omir is probably the sub maybe uh or it could be erasmus i guess they play the same position but amir is a bit older and they seem to like to bring him in later um no darcy no sean darcy so that is good for jackson Holder. is going to get one more week and it's against a good matchup so we could be in for some jackson pain um i wouldn't be captaining so wrong because there's very big potential drew goes to him um it could be good scoring for young again and brayshaw and fast named in the middle with Sharp on the wing. So that keeps that all pretty clear. Now, North have made a lot of changes, and I'm not seeing my boy Lazaro get back in. Um, so that's probably going to be a common trade. They're definitely keeping Combin in, which is good. Um, McKerch is back on that back line where we want to see him for his scoring. Um, and against Geelong, they generally allow decent scoring from the back line. So that's good to see. Um, Harford for those who went in, uh, he's in the he's in the midfield, named in the midfield still. Dempsey's actually been named on a wing. Don't know if that's good or bad. Oh, I assume that's good for his scoring. I think that's the position he's been playing anyway, really. Um, and I wonder if O'Sullivan gets a debut. Doubt it, because their back line is. Oh no, he does. Sorry, that was dumb of me to say. He's actually named on field. So O'Sullivan is another defender rookie we're getting. But I still think Tom Brown, uh, I think Sullivan's a key, more of a key back. I mean, I guess he could be that fourth defender who gets a little bit of a run at the ball and stuff. So that'll be interesting to watch as well, actually, because the Coning Henry can take those bigger boys and then Stuart is there, obviously. Cut off Mark. Maybe O'Sullivan gets that third defender where it's not really great for either, kind of what House was playing when Salem went back. That's what really helped House actually score this week was um, Salem getting injured. Um, and yeah, North have made a lot of changes. Sellers, Hanson Jr., Phillips, Archer, and Drury. It'd be interesting to see if any of these get game time. I would assume that the bench is going to be Stevens, Wardlaw, um, Shields, and probably one of Phillips and Drury with either one of them to sub. Um, what's Phillips? I think Phillips is like 300K, isn't he? 
400k. He was a decent rookie last year when he actually got game time, but um, he isn't loved. Power, 50th game. Uh, is he named? He is named on a forward flank. Don't love that. Nah. I feel like Power such, su is such a trap. Uh, I feel like this has been such a trap pick, but hopefully he can move up the ground and get some ball. Bloody Greenwood coming into the team really just hurts Power. Because I feel like, right, what's happened is they've gone Greenwood in, Power's gone to Lazaro's role of a forward flank because Greenwood plays that in and under role, whereas Lazaro was more of a guy who could push off the forward flank. So, um, yeah, not great to see. And, you know, Phillips is now back in as well, which I feel like doesn't help Power either. So I feel like this has become a real dud quick pick really quick. One of the reasons was I was holding out him, but then he, then he went that 90 and it's just like, oh, if we don't go now, we miss him. And then annoying, annoying. And then West Coast v. Richmond, so these are extended benches. Um, good news is K. McAuliffe has not been dropped, or he's not named as injured, so that's good. Could be a, a midfield uh, option next week or even the week after because he had that 16. So odds are he's going to have to score a 50 to even go up, you know, um, a good amount this week. Uh, sorry, to have a good break even next week to go forward. Um, West Coast, yeah, not much to say about them. They haven't really changed much. McGovern's still on that back, back line. Um, but yes, so that's the teams because, I mean, none of this really affects Baker back into the team. That's about it. Um, and I thought I'd just look at one more interesting thing. So I'm still trying to choose between McGovern and Yo. I was having a look at the... Uh, the Supercoach Plus, and I didn't notice that looking at all the coaches that are popular trade in is um wait season own change is that it I oh, know round own change a popular trade in was yo um so it's one point eight percent for all teams but I think if we go to like top one percent it's a lot higher. So I think, yeah, it's 14% of the top 1% have brought in Yo. Very interesting. Probably looking at the same things that I was with um, just the strength of fixture coming into the end of the season. So other strong picks between them are Closey, Flanders, Martin, Steele. I think they're all pretty pretty common for a lot of people. 60, 13% bringing in Sharp, so looking for the cash. Probably in position to be able to do that. 12% going for Francis, which I like. I don't mind betting against, although he probably would go well, but is he going to be a top midfielder? Um, Graham Cobb and, and Young back in. So, and this has 8.6% of them are going teeny. They must be in a really good position where they got nothing else to do. And then top 5%, I think was, was that even better? Nah, it's a bit worse. So, as you can see, the top 1% are pretty high on um, a yo. So, I don't know. It's an interesting, interesting one to look at. His ownership is 12% going up to 13. McGovern is the higher price, but lower percentage ownership. I don't know. I'm not sold on which way I'm going to go with that. I think I'm going to stick with Meek. And um, I don't know, but I might have a look around. Um Rankin lot has a low break, uh, low projector, which is good. So hopefully he can pump through that and get like an eighty on ninety. That's good enough for a forward, I guess. Um, but anyway, that's how the team shapes up now. Sam Walsh is back. Pretty sure that was a thing. Did I miss that? Probably did talk over the yeah. So Sam Walsh is back. So how does this affect Alton? <clears throat> Because Hollands isn't out, which I'm very surprised by because I thought he had the hamstring issue. Hewitt's named back in. And then Walsh is named on the bench. Now, I feel like this could mean that we see a Jack Carroll or Corey Durden stuff. For me, Durden probably has more impact, but Colton have like previously to play that midfielder um, like they did with Ollie Hollands a lot last year. Um, before there was that injury, I think it was Walsh. Um, and how does this affect their midfield? So I think that Harrell's going to lose some CBAs to Walsh, and then I think 
the rest of them will probably come out of that. Maybe Hewitt and Shera. I don't think Cripps, they'll change up much. But they could try and play him as a key, uh, like a, a big a forward presence, maybe. Um, but I feel like Hewitt's going to be tagging, so he'll probably still keep his CBA. So maybe they come from Chera. Um, But anyway, um, moving on from that. So this is what the team kind of looks like. So obviously, I've got Brown. Now, if he scores 71, he's going to go up by 47K, and then his break-even next week will still be good, I think. Looking at a break-even that's still negative next week, so that could be 100K in, well, yeah, 88K in two weeks. And he's got West Coast, but he's got the buy the week after, which is the only bad thing. So these defender ins have really... Kind of change up the plan because we went from not really having much to now having quite a bit. Um, selected the players down here. So yeah, all of a sudden we have Hamill, Sullivan, even O'Donnell's only two hundred k. I thought he was uh, a bit more than that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we got three three choices here, which could be all right. Um, along with if we take out defenders, like we have a lot, like even Mac Andrews an option, um, Combin, Closey, um, let's keep it to three hundred k under, because otherwise there's a lot. Um, yeah, quite a few. Even Jed Walter one ninety eight k. If he goes like an eighty on. Oh, it's his second game. Okay, scratch an 80 or 90. But Ethan Reed, um, as we said, even a Rasmus 238k, like if he goes well as a midfielder, you could go in. But he does have one game where he played sub, so it's probably what he's going to play again. But I think, yeah, the interesting ones are we have got two new defenders that haven't played more than, or three new defenders that haven't played a, a game yet to, to get a look. Um, I think the only one I'm really interested there is Will Hamill. So. Um, that's actually probably good because I just don't think Sull uh, Sullivan's going to score that well. And O'Donnell's price is probably not going to match his actual scoring. And also Bebo, that could do Bebo things. So anyway, um, that's a long roundabout way of looking at the game from tonight and everything else. So yeah, at the moment, I've taken the VC of Gorn, which is 138. That'll be good enough if someone goes bigger, which they probably will because that has been my luck. Uh, this year, um, good on him. It will probably be Bond. Bond will probably go 160. Um, really punishing those who get a good VC to start with. I feel like there's been a lot of punish in that this year. Uh, but otherwise, I hope everyone's round started off well. I hope those, uh, I mean, a lot of us got on Gorn, so it should have. Um, otherwise, I probably won't record until uh, the reviews. So um, anyway, hope you enjoyed it, got something out of it. Um, watch out for the rookie rundowns next week because there'll be a couple of them and um, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.